Hi, today we're going to talk about the effects of DDoS attacks on carrier grade NAT devices in the service provider network. In our typical network, we have our subscribers on the edge, and we have our access and core network. We will have a carrier grade NAT device installed toward the edge, our peering router, and then the internet. And out in the internet, we will have some malicious actor who wishes to attack the infrastructure within the service provider network. These attacks take on several different, um, uh, several different attacks within the CGN network and cause problems within both the device and for the subscriber itself. One is, is that we now have moved the public IP address that typically is assigned to our subscriber onto the carrier grade NAT device. And now we are overloading that address with multiple subscribers. So when a volumetric attack comes into our CGN device, we have this distribution of the attack uh, across multiple subs. In some cases, depending upon uh, the service provider and their ability to um, use their current IPv4 infrastructure for NATing, we may see a 64 to 1 subscriber to IP ratio or even as high as 256 to 1. So these particular volumetric attacks that are coming into the carrier grade NAT device that are targeting our NAT pool will have the effect on the subscribers of actually distributing and actually amplifying the attack across multiple users. So that's the first problem. The second is within the carrier grade NAT device itself is now we can exhaust resources such, such as the ability to build sessions, the connection rate setup time. Um, these particular problems within the carrier grade NAT device will now cause an outage, not only for this number of subscribers, but also for any services also mapped within the data path of this particular attack. So within our carrier grade NAT device, we're gonna have a particular data path for the attack, and this will take the effect of L2, L3, network processors, uh, maybe CPUs, etc. To mitigate these particular types of attacks, which we'll cover in a later video, we need to be able to drop this uh, attack very early in the data path to protect the device. In protecting the device, we also need to be able to blacklist these NAT IP addresses as well. By blacklisting the NAT IP address, now we can remap our subscribers into another space where the uh, public IP is no longer compromised, restoring service back to them. The other type of attack we want to be aware of is a attack that exposes uh, endpoint independent filtering connections. In these types of attacks, we have multiple entities in the internet, which could be assembled as a botnet, and they are using endpoint independent filtering connections to actually attack a known NetPool IP address and port. Uh, there's a couple of effects here. One is, is that our subscriber now actually sees this attack. And the attack we were talking about before, where it's actually just attacking a random NAT IP address, we really just have the idea of the infrastructure being attacked itself and causing an outage for subscribers for that particular IP address. Here, we're actually transferring the volumetric attack inward to our subscriber. So in this particular attack, we have a couple of effects. One is we are reducing the ability to carry traffic on our core links uh, due to the volumetric attack. We're also passing it through the box, causing um, compromising the actual hardware itself. And then we're passing it into the access network. And for particular access networks, uh, such as PON, this can be uh, devastating uh, for multiple users as well that may not even be tied as these are to this IP address, but simply are just tied to this infrastructure. By using a combination of techniques of blacklisting the NAT IP address and also connection rate limiting, we can reduce this type of attack, uh, restoring service to our subscriber. It's important to note that this particular attack can also exhaust other resources, such as our ability to set up sessions with our connection rate um, facility within the device as well. So we need to be able to have a connection rate limiter, and we also need to be able to identify the attack and then mitigate the attack by moving this particular subscriber set over onto another public IP address. 
So thank you for uh, listening today and be sure and check out our other videos uh, here at A10 Networks. <laughs>